Muhterem sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretleri'nin aziz hak münevver mutahhar müşteriflerine salavat şerife getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır ola. Ales vacı tahirat evladı Resulü Esra bizim efendilerimizin ve sayr enbiya izan ve Resulü Tihan Hazretleri'nin erva şeriflerine pirimiz Bilal Habeş radıyallahu anh Efendimizin şeyhimiz sahibi Seyf Şabdül Kerim el Kudreser Rabbani Hazretleri'nin ve alel husus bu caminin ve aynesi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezzin kaymalarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahi için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Minnallaha ve melaiketehu sallunu alem nebi Ya eyvelezine amelu sallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedu Allah Teala ve nestafir ve şerru en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerru enne seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu, habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve sahbihi tabi hulefe rahşin mahadin min ba'di. Huzirmeti ala tahkik, huzirmeti ala tahkik, huzirmeti hulefe resulü ala tahkik. Umar el-Mu'minin Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Osman Ali. Wala bagi sabit tabin ridon Allah Ta'ala alayhi majma'in. Ya ayuhal mu'minul hazirun, itaqo Allah Ta'ala, wa ta'inna Allah hamal ladhina, itaqo Allah ladhina hum muhsinin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursalin. Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All praises are due to Allah who created the heavens and the earth, who made the angels, messengers with wings, two or three or four. He adds to creation as he pleases, for Allah has power over all things. That which Allah opens unto mankind of mercy, none can withhold it. And that which he withholds, none can release thereafter. He is the mighty, the wise. O mankind, Remember the favor of Allah upon you. Is there any creator other than Allah who provides for you from the sky and the earth? There is no Allah except Him. So how are you deluded? And if they deny you, messengers of Allah were denied before you. Unto Allah are all things brought back. O men, certainly the promise of Allah is true. So do not let the life of this world deceive you. And be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver. Indeed, shaitan is an enemy to you. So treat him as an enemy. He only invites his party to be among the companions of the fire. For those who reject Allah is a terrible penalty. But for those who believe and they do righteous deeds is forgiveness and a magnificent reward. Sadaqallah Nazim. May peace and blessings be upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. 
The Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Whoever sends salawat upon me once, Allah will send salawat upon him tenfold and will erase ten sins for him and will raise him ten degrees in status. Oh Allah, send salawat, salawats upon Sayyidina Muhammad والسلام, your servant, your prophet, your messenger, the unlettered prophet. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafai Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Allah, bless us in Rajab and Shaban, and let us reach to Ramazan. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, how are we fitting to the category of believers, of mu'mins? Are we fitting to the category of those who submit, Muslims? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the definition of the believers in Surah Al-Mu'minun, saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Successful indeed are the believers, those who humble themselves in prayer, who avoid useless, vain talk, who are active in deeds of charity, who guard their modesty, except from their wives or those their right hand possesses, for then they are not blameworthy. But those whose desires exceed beyond that, such are transgressors. Those who are shepherds of their trusts and promises, and who strictly guard their prayers. These are the inheritors who will inherit paradise. They will dwell therein forever. This is a basic definition of a believer in the Quran al Karim. We know ourselves, do we fit to this description? Being humble in our prayers, avoiding useless talk, being active and generous in giving charity and serving others? Are we guarding our modesty? Are we keeping our trusts and our promises and guarding our prayers carefully? If not, we cannot call ourselves believers. Our Shaykh is giving us a deeper description of how the believer must be, saying, Allah has granted to you 24,000 breaths of life every day. Every day you are taking 24,000 in and out. It's calculated. When that is finished, your life is finished. Today's people don't know how to spend their breath of life too. They are running around wildly. They don't keep the orders of Allah and His Prophet They are sitting under the curses of Allah day and night and their life is shortening what we will do with that life. Why Allah has given it to us, why He has sent us to this world to be slaves to this world, is that the reason for believers to be slaves to the world, to run after the world or to prepare ourselves for Ahirat life? That's what the believer is supposed to be. Don't say I am a believer and live a lifestyle like the unbelievers then you will be counted. You will be entering into the book as hypocrites. The unbelievers, they are one step higher than the hypocrites. The hypocrites, the munafiks, are in the lowest station of the hellfire. Israel is going to come. The angel of death is going to come. There are two doors going out. One is the door of Rahmat, and the other one is the door of zahmat, difficulties. The way you live, the Prophet is saying, والسلام, that's how you are going to die. The way you die, that's how you're going to rise to the judgment day. Look at yourself, how you are living. What is your idea for life? Look at it and then understand how you're going to die. If you don't like it, then change it. Change it 
the way that Allah and his Prophet wants it. In the words of the friends of Allah, they speak the truth. The believer doesn't live as he likes. Our life is not for ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the breath of life to serve him, to know him. Service to him is service to the Prophet. And service to the Prophet والسلام, is service to the inheritors and the service to them is service to the Ummat. Looking after the needs of others. This is why our Grand Shaykh Hazrat Abu Hassan al Harkani Qadr said, A scholar wakes up in the morning thinking how to increase his knowledge. The pious, the religious ones, wake up and think how to increase in worship. Abu Hassan spends all day thinking how to make Allah's creatures happy. Sultan al-Awliya Shaykh Mawlana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Qadr is explaining this, saying, For man to be happy, Allah has sent this religion to him, a code of laws for everyone. Let us pay attention to this. O oh listeners, you all have heard of your grandmothers and grandfathers when they wished for something good to happen. Say to everyone and to us as well, Ya Rabbi. This is the training of Islam which saves people from being selfish and ego egoistic and from not caring about others. Not just for my own person, O oh Lord, for my whole community, my whole nation, perhaps for all of mankind, O oh Lord. That is the fundamental teaching that Islam has given. It is a principle that will save all of humanity. It is Islam that teaches humanity to wish for goodness and happiness for everyone, just as one wishes it for oneself, not only for you, but also for your brother. There is a famous incident. Musa salam, once had a neighbor. He was a poor man, impoverished and destitute. Musa salam, was the prophet who spoke with Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty had granted him this special relationship. One day he set out for the mountain of Tur. And the poor neighbor said, Ya Musa, I'm making a request. This is a trust from Allah Almighty, which I entrust to you. Please present it to me. Present it for me to Allah when you reach his presence. And what was Allah Almighty's answer when Musa salam, informed Allah of the trust that person had given him. Allah is saying, Ya Musa, convey this message. Let him ask the same thing for his neighbor and I will at once grant it. Let him also wish the same for his neighbor. When Musa salam, came and said and brought the poor neighbors this answer, he said, if he must give my neighbor as well, this poor neighbor is saying, if Allah must give my neighbor as well, then let him give nothing at all. He wished only for himself. That one, at that moment, he lost. This is what Islam came to teach humanity. Do not think only of yourself. Think of all your brothers in Islam. Think of all the brothers of your nation, of all mankind. Include everyone in your good wishes and desires. That is the principle. The month of Ramadan, the honored guest, it is just at the door. Ramadan comes to teach us this principle, to put it in our lives and to make it part of us. Shaykh Ali is saying, the Muslim world, the believers, they have lost. They have lost because of this. One of the biggest problems why Muslims have lost today, everywhere, in Muslim nations and in Muslim countries, is because they are not giving zakat anymore. Go and search them 
And you'll find how many of them are giving zakat. That's why no barakat, no rahmat, no mercy coming to those nations. Individuals, yes, individuals. Allah is separating them. But to those nations, no mercy, no rahmat is reigning, no barakat coming. Mercy is still there because there is not punishment. But no barakat, no blessings. Whatever they have, there is not barakat. Because we are stepping on the word of Allah that way. So the month of Ramadan is to remind us. The month of Ramadan is to make us understand, oh, I was so selfish. I was only thinking about myself. Never thinking about others. The month of Ramadan is to make you to think, to understand the feeling of other people, how they are feeling. They don't have, you may think they have. There was a time a man was killing himself, working so hard and saving up some money, little money every day. In the old days, it was almost impossible. In these days, it's possible for everyone because Allah made everybody rich. If you go into the category of Islam today, every one of us are rich. And if you don't believe me, then come later to me after we finish the prayers and everything. Tell me I'm not rich and I'll tell you. Tell me what you have. And I put it in accounting and you'll see if you're rich or not. According to Islam, not according to America. In America, nobody is rich. Everybody is poor. That is for sure. Everybody is poor in America. They are wealthy. Wealthy but they are very poor. They are not rich. Rich are the believers. Believers are rich because they don't count. They don't calculate. They take and they give. They're rich. The one who is counting is wealthy. But what happened to us? Yes, once upon a time we were not like that. The Muslims were giving and in the time of Osman radiallahu an, the Baytul Mal was filled up so they were also giving money to Christians and to unbelievers to make their hearts warm to Islam. They were giving away just like that. They said, how foolish are these ones? How foolish? They're giving. Allahu Akbar. No. The more you give, the more Allah sends. The more you give, the more Allah sends. There is a direct connection of risk. Ya Razak. The risk that is between you and Allah it's direct and it's reaching from here to paradise. If you cut it this much, instantly it comes down again. Take that out and it fills up instantly. The more you take, the more comes down, never ending. Try it. Look what happens. The month of Ramadan is to make us go back to that, to think, to understand what we have lost and what we are losing. O oh believers, how much longer are we going to drown in the oceans of heedlessness? How much longer are we going to care only about ourselves? We care only if something bad happens to us, but we stop caring and feeling when we are comfortable, when we are happy. Forget about thinking about others. Our honor, our nobility, our reason of creation lies in serving our brothers for the pleasure of Allah. Rasulullah said, Surely Allah has vessels on this earth. He has containers on his earth, meaning our hearts. And the containers, the vessels that are dearest, most valuable to Allah, are the purest and strongest and finest. Purest from sins, strongest in faith and finest toward their brothers. Another hadith is Sharif. He is saying, generosity is near to Allah, near to paradise, near to the people and far from hellfire. Miserliness is far from Allah, far from paradise, 
far from the people and near to the fire. An ignorant, generous person is more beloved to Allah Azawajal than a stingy scholar. We are in the Ahir of Ahir Zaman. Just as the flood came to the people in the first age of this world, another flood is guaranteed to come at the end of time, the time that we are living in. Just as the only safety in the first time was in the ship of Nuh salam, the same way the safety in the Ahil Zaman is in the ships of safety, the Ahlil Bayt. We should be running more towards that safety, not running away from it. And the Ahlil Bayt who has been sent to us, our Shah is giving us advice and warning. And the lives of the Ahlil Bayt has been nothing but complete sacrifice. Shaykh Fendi is saying, wake up to yourselves, save yourselves to understand. Yes, to understand Nuh Salam's ship, those people, so many who entered, that is not so many. It's only 83 people that have entered the ship. When they are looking outside from a million, majority of them were their family members. They were laughing at them. They were joking. And they were laughing at them when they were entering, but they held on tightly to Nuh salam. They believed Nuh salam. They didn't know the book. They did not know the book. <coughs> they did not know Allah. They believed Nuh salam, and they entered into the ship. There was no sign. There was no sign that was given up until the last minute. There was no big sign until the last minute. The sky was open as usual. And the others were saying to them, you are crazy lunatic. You went into that ship and the door of that ship, everything shut. It was from the top. Sides are completely closed. They said, come out. You are going to suffocate in there with the animals. You are such a crazy ones. Look at you, such a beautiful day. You're thinking that is going to be a flood. This is what happened. This is exactly what they did. You are our family. How lunatic you became. You followed a stupid old man. He lost his mind. This is what they said to them. And Nuh salam saying, those who believe, they should be in. Those who doesn't believe, they cannot enter. And they didn't. And in a split second, the whole weather changed. That sunshine changed. The sky started carrying the big clouds and the black clouds completely and the earth started boiling. Water started coming from the earth up and raining thunders and everything started coming from the sky. All of a sudden, everything has changed. Yes, that's Allah. Allahu Akbar. He does as He likes. But He does things the way His servants are moving. So make intention to move to the right direction this year. Make intention, not only through a tongue, through your action, through your lifestyle, to move to the right direction. All those who is following me specially, all those who is following me specially here too, make intention to leave your egoistic, selfish ways. Islam is not accepting selfishness. Majority of you, became so selfish that you don't know what's happening to your brother and your sister if they are dying or if they are living you're just following your egoistic lifestyle just like wolves alone and make lives to your own selves according to your own ego no that's exactly what shaitan wants you to do to separate you to keep you distant to keep you away that this way you don't get this kind of reminders. It may wake you up, or if the thunder will come, it may catch you inside the ship. This life is given to you. The choice is yours. You are going to make your own choice, just like those people made it, to enter into the ship or to not enter into the ship. If they all decided last minute to enter into that ship, that ship would have carried every single one of them. That's Allah. Allahu Akbar. So if you choose, decide to change 100% from your egoistic way, from your selfish way, Islam is not accepting any selfishness. That's why I'm very upset 
with so many of you. Later, I'm going to talk to you privately, not on the internet, those who is around me, and I'm going to show you how selfish you became. And as you like, if you decide to change or not, but if you don't change from that selfishness, believe me, you're going to be in big trouble. So you have to put some belief in your heart. Believe of Islam. Believe that Holy Prophet ﷺ has brought, not something you have made it up to your own self to say, Oh, I am a believer, and this is Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, and that's it, and I'm praying, and that's it. No, that's not it. That's not enough. That's not enough to save you. Believe me. So inshallah, this much should be enough for you and for me. I'm not accepting that time. The saying that, oh, Shaykh, this is the hadith. Give the good news and make people happy. I'm not accepting it this time. It's good for those who is already in awakening station. Yes, better days is waiting for those ones. If you are not in awakening station, there is a death and a life waiting for you, you're going to suffocate between those two. You have to wake up. You have to push yourself to wake up. You have to find other energy to make you to wake up. Yes. Yes, we have to wake up. There is no more time left. We have to make tawbah. We have to step on our egos. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if it is Mevlit or Rajab or Shaban or Ramazan. We're going to stay the same. Because our faith is just on our tongues. Our religion is just from our tongue. It doesn't pass our throat. It doesn't enter into the heart. When it enters into the heart, it will show through our actions. It will show to what we are thinking, what we are doing. When it doesn't, then it is showing to. We are asking with Shaykh Mawlana's dua. May Allah forgive us. May we not follow our ego. May we not run after shaitan. May we not be caught up in evil. May we be good ones. The good one's name is written through the heavens. The bad one's names are written under the earth. Take care of yourself, O oh mankind. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد لله الشيء الكبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك والحمد لله الشيء الكبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك سبحان كدوس من الله سبحان كدوس من الله سبحان كدوس من الله إلا دين من الله لا سبحان خم صلاة Allah, <laughs> Allah,